months ago, I joined a gathering of technologists, teachers, leaders, and others for CEO Spring Break, a mastermind group convened to talk shop and the future of tech. I never thought much about NFTs before that conference. If you're like me, understanding the metaverse, all this talk about NFTs and $300,000 monkey pictures feels like a lot to digest. But on day two, Harold Hughes, the founder of Bandwagon, stepped on stage and invited us to do something he called Mint Our Moments, meaning turn our social media videos and the photos taken with our newfound friends into digital art. As a newcomer to the NFT world, I fumbled with the instructions, but I eventually found out how to add tokens to my NFT wallet. And ultimately, I uploaded a few of my moments into the ether. I have to say, there's something empowering about minting your own NFT, knowing that a digital image or video is only yours, protected by the blockchain. The exercise made those photos with my new friends feel special. What Harold Hughes taught me that week is that NFTs can be a way of building communities. He says that with NFTs, you're able to find yourself and be able to participate with people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. And it's been really, really exciting to see what the new opportunities are going to come from when you put this amazing technology in the hands of so many different people. The NFTs I shared with my new friends helped strengthen our little community because these were photos and videos that only we had ownership of. And the experience made me reconsider this new technology. I'm Sherelle Dorsey, and this is TED Tech. Where we fit into this new NFT world on a day-to-day basis can feel a little disorienting. Thankfully, we have University of Georgia lecturer Elizabeth Strickler to break it down for us. She'll explain the fundamentals of NFTs and how these digital assets are dramatically changing the art landscape. Then stick around after the talk for a conversation about NFTs and equity with thoughts from Q. Harrison Terry, co-writer of the NFT Handbook. Everything in the real world is being recreated in the virtual world, the metaverse. The metaverse, a persistent digital universe that mirrors our world, but is becoming as diverse and awe-inspiring as the natural world. And you'll be able to do everything you do in the real world, in the virtual world, and more. In the real world, you can walk into a gallery, buy a -a one-of-a-kind artwork that is signed and authenticated as original, take it home, put it on the wall, enjoy it, show it to your friends, and it might even be an investment. The artwork becomes part of your story and adds meaning to your life. It marks a time and a feeling for you. Now, we can have the exact same experience in virtual galleries with digital art. While this might seem like an obscure niche on the internet, in March of 2021, the major auction house Christie's sold a purely digital artwork by an artist named Beeple for $69 million in cryptocurrency. The auction, the artwork, and the currency was virtual, but the transaction was very real. But who can afford a Beeple? Don't worry, there are lots of artists creating digital art and conceptualizing brand new art forms that you can afford. I direct media entrepreneurship and innovation at the Creative Media Industries Institute at Georgia State University. And our students are building the metaverse as I speak. We imagine a future where the students and all digital artists are able to continue building new visions and new worlds, basically a better internet, and can make a living while doing so. The revolutionary instrument that allowed for a digital file to be sold as a unique artwork for $69 million dollars is the same tool that will allow our students to make livings as freelance creators. There is a paradigm shift happening that is turning the world of content creation and its financial rewards on its head. Gone are the days of the internet being a giant copying machine, of intermediaries taking a larger cut than the creators, and of artists not receiving royalties. 
This new automated tool that allows for guaranteed proof of origination and ownership of music, videos, images, and even text is called an NFT, non-fungible token. The NFT is allowing everyone to own their own data, starting with art, and there is a hope that it will revolutionize how value is created online and how digital labor is monetized. So the eternal question, what is an NFT? Simply put, it is a permanent tracking device that proves ownership of a digital file. Somewhat similar to the way that you can chip a pet to identify it as yours if it runs away, an NFT is a cryptographic token connected to a digital asset to preserve ownership rights in the metaverse. Non-fungible means not exchangeable. Most things in the real world are non-fungible because most physical objects are unique and can't be traded one for one. There is no painting, pet, or person that is exactly equivalent to another. Money, on the other hand, is one of the few items that is fungible, meaning one dollar is equivalent to another dollar and one Bitcoin is equivalent to another Bitcoin. The underlying decentralized technology that enabled digital currencies such as Bitcoin is blockchain. Blockchain prevents digital money from being duplicated or hacked, and it removes the need for a centralized authority, such as a bank, to validate transactions. And like Bitcoin, the record of ownership of an NFT is kept in a public database on the internet that is maintained by millions of computers that keep track via consensus of all content origination and transactions. At the Blockchain Lab at Georgia State University, we study how to monetize creative labor using blockchains and other decentralized ledger technologies. I believe that this technology in the form of NFTs has the potential to humanize the internet and to create an equitable foundation for its next phase, the metaverse. This decentralized business model gives financial power back to the creators and reduces the power of the broker, the middleman, and even social media platforms. Amy Rader is a fine artist in Atlanta who shows in traditional galleries. She created her first NFT so that she could expand to an online audience and to add a new revenue stream to increase her income. Street art is not permanent. So how will an important cultural icon like Greg Mike utilize this new creative economy? If you're from Atlanta, you have probably seen some of his work on walls and buildings. He is using the unique qualities of NFTs to innovate and to collaborate with other artists and musicians and connect with fans on the internet. This way, his work will live on and he can take the proceeds from the sales and resales and continue creating his art. Musicians can also capture their true value using NFTs. Atlanta music producer Dallas Austin is allowing fans to collect memorabilia of his great moments in music history, similar to the way that NBA Top Shots is allowing basketball fans to collect historical replays as NFTs. In the metaverse, humans are represented as avatars. An eight-year-old probably knows, but did you know that you can buy clothes for your avatar? Today, Gucci sells sneakers that only exist in the virtual world, and you can never wear them. But your avatar can. Alternatively, you can use augmented reality to overlay virtual sneakers onto your in-real-life feet. And because of NFTs, anyone, not just well-known companies like Gucci, can create digital fashion to be bought, sold, and worn in games, online platforms, and even in avatar fashion shows. Take the pioneer 18-year-old Fawocious, who was way ahead of Gucci with his crypto art and digital sneakers. The use of augmented and virtual reality fashion is becoming mainstream. But because NFTs as art and collectibles are so new, the predictions are too volatile for anyone to make. But it is a sign that heavy hitters like Mark Cuban and Snoop Dogg are investing heavily. This is a new frontier for artists and their fans. And just like in the real world, an artist can sell a one-of-a-kind piece, 
make limited additions to control for scarcity, show in art, show in art galleries and marketplaces. But with NFTs, you can also sell directly to your buyer without an intermediary, collect royalties on all future resales, expand your audience to the entire internet, show in virtual galleries and virtual worlds, and sell 3D objects and clothes to virtual humans. Okay, so how does this work and how do you get involved as an artist? Your artwork is a digital file. To protect this file and capture the value of your labor in perpetuity, you go to a digital goods marketplace and mint it, meaning you register your work as a token for a fee on the blockchain. It will contain a signature, timestamp, and any rules around its resale. Once you have minted your work and you want to sell it, you connect with your community and let them know that your NFT has dropped, meaning it is for sale. It is important to note that all the same rules that make for good art and good business apply in the virtual world. A strong connection to your followers, an authentic or compelling story, and consistent output and work ethic. So who will buy your art? Or how do you get involved as a collector? Buyers go to the same marketplaces that artists use. There, you look for art that you appreciate and artists you want a direct connection with. Some people invest because the artwork resonates with them, or they recognize great talent, or they see a potential for that artist to play a significant part in history. Once purchased directly from the artist, you store your NFTs in your digital wallet. From there, you can show on screens and online marketplaces or in galleries, such as Rare Rooms, a blockchain innovation by Atlanta's Gig Labs. And with NFTs, a buyer knows their art is fair trade, transactions are transparent, and the ecosystem is equitable. The metaverse is a place where we will spend more and more of our lives. Who builds it, who owns it, and how it is built will determine what this world becomes. But just like the real world, the metaverse is very complex and there are many problems yet to be solved. And that is where you come in. You are the future, a digital citizen whose responsibility it is to be a good steward to the metaverse, making sure that it is diverse, equitable, accessible, and sustainable. This is just the beginning of the decentralized movement. NFTs will revolutionize most online industries, but it is starting with the creative economy. While nothing in this talk is financial advice, it is definitely educational encouragement. And why not start learning through art? Jump in. We need you. We need you. I agree with Elizabeth Strickler that equity is a significant part of this conversation. Decentralization has enabled this really exciting opportunity. Creators owning, sharing, and trading their own work on their own terms. Putting as much of that power back in the hands of creators is something I'm very excited about. I wanted to know more about how NFTs can empower artists and communities. So I reached out to Q. Harrison Terry, co-writer of the NFT Handbook and an NFT entrepreneur. Like Elizabeth, he believes that the ability to own and sell your own artwork on the blockchain can help artists make a living. I personally believe that NFTs are one of the greatest opportunities for creators because they allow for scarcity of digital assets. If you're a digital artist and you draw and paint digitally, and then you have to sell that as a canvas or as a, a digital uh, print, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and that has been happening for a long time. And now with this whole element of digital scarcity that an NFT provides, you really now are in a new era where value can be assigned to digital files in ways that it just didn't exist. With NFTs, we really are in a new era of digital art and ownership. But like with many new technologies, there are NFT skeptics. 
A lot of people look at NFTs and the massive multi-million dollar sales of digital art and see one big scam. But Hugh Harrison says it doesn't have to be that way. What we're misunderstanding about NFTs is this isn't something that scammers can ruin forever. It's a new technology that exists and it's emerging, but it's here to stay. And the format of an NFT is something that will be built upon for many decades to come. I think, you know, in 10 to 15 years from now, it probably will just be a regular way of life, sort of how, you know, we download and and send PDF files without almost thinking about it or how we, you know, record music into MP3 formats without even thinking about it. There was a time and place and period within all of our lifetimes, just about where all of the things I just mentioned were abnormal or rare or looked down upon. So that's something that I would just take note and heed of that it's not happening tomorrow, but it's definitely uh, an emerging technology that we all have to be aware of that's having a really crazy impact in our lives. The NFT marketplace and growth of the metaverse isn't slowing down. I encourage you to check out Q Harrison's book, The NFT Handbook, as well as Harold Hughes's A Kid's Book on the Blockchain to immerse yourself and your family in the possibilities of this new technology. The more we learn about NFTs and the blockchain, the more we'll have a say in the shaping of how we use this tech now and in the future. TED Tech is part of the TED Audio Collective and is produced by TED in partnership with Transmitter Media. Our editor is Sammy Case, and the show is fact-checked by TED. I'm Sherelle Dorsey. Let's keep digging into the future. Join me next week for more.